This is module two, lesson three, solving multi-step equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve equations involving more than one operation. We learned in the previous lesson about one step equations where we took one operation and had to undo it in order to solve for our variable. So let's learn about solving multi-step equations. A multi-step equation is an equation that uses more than one property of equality to solve it. So to solve this type of equation, you can undo each operation using the properties of equality that we learned about in the last lesson. Working backwards of order of operations makes this process simpler. And if we do it correct, it results in equivalent expressions along the way. So as we're going through this, if we see addition, we're going to do the opposite operation to undo it, which would be subtraction. If we see subtraction, we'd undo it with addition. If we see multiplication, we'd undo it with division, and division would be undone with multiplication. And as I said, we're going to go backwards from order of operations. So if we see adding or subtracting, we're generally going to do that first. Then if we see multiplication or division, we would do that next. If we see exponents, we're probably going to do that third. And then as we'll learn in future lessons, when we see parentheses, sometimes you're going to want to get those parentheses by itself by doing everything around it. So that ends up being one of the later things. Example one, solve multi-step equations. Use properties of equality to solve each equation. Check your solutions. Part A, we have 2a minus 6 equals 4. So here, before I even begin, I can see I have two operations. I have subtraction there, and there's a hidden multiplication between the 2 and the a. Before I even begin, I'm thinking somewhere I'm going to need to add, somewhere I'm going to need to divide, since those are the opposite operations of what I saw. So first thing I would do, going the reverse order of operations, I'm going to undo that minus 6 by adding 6 to each side. Remember, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other in order to keep our equation equal. Negative 6 plus 6 makes 0, so I'm left with just 2a. And then combining these together, 4 plus 6 gives us 10. Now, this is my hidden multiplication, so to undo that, the opposite operation would be divide by the number out in front of a, so divide by 2 to both sides, and on the left, 2 divided by 2 is 1, which we don't need to write, and that is equal to 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So, our value of a here would be 5. As we're going through this, we should make sure we're checking our solution, so I'm going to plug 5 back into the original equation to see if it's a true statement. So, instead of a, I'm going to substitute in 5, 2 times 5 is 10, if I subtract 6 from 10, I get 4. Does 4 equal 4? Yes, it's true. My solution was correct. Part B, n plus 1, all divided by negative 2, equals 15. Again, I'm going to look within the problem and think about what operations I see so I know what I need to undo. I see a plus sign here, so I'm thinking somewhere i got to subtract. And the fraction bar is division, so somewhere I'm going to need to multiply. If you come across a problem like this that looks like a complex fraction, you're actually going to want to do the multiplication first I know that doesn't necessarily fit with the whole reverse order of operations, but it's going to make it a lot simpler. So if we multiply each side by negative 2, and whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other, I have negative 2 divided by negative 2. Those make 1, so essentially I just multiply by 1. I'm left with what was in the numerator, or on top. And then negative 2 times 15 is negative 30. Now I just have n plus 1 is equal to negative 30, so I'm going to undo that addition by subtracting 1 from both sides. Positive 1 minus 1 gives us our 0, so there's nothing left. n is equal to, and then negative 30 minus 1, I went down 30, down 1 more, is negative 31. And again, let's check to make sure we get the right answer. So I'm going to do my work over here. Negative 31 plus 1, all divided by negative 2, does that equal 15? Negative 31 plus 1 is negative 30, divided by negative 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15. A negative divided by negative is positive, so... 15 equals 15, yes. Check your understanding. Solve these two equations. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have got m was equal to negative 5, and then second, x is equal to 61. So the first one, we're going to have to subtract 4 from both sides. Positive 4 minus 4 is 0, so that would disappear. I'd be left with 3m equals, and then negative 11 minus 4 more is negative 15. Divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. So there's that one. And then for the second one, we have our complex fraction. So here I would need to multiply first both sides by 7. That will get rid of my fraction, because times 7 divided by 7, those are inverse operations, they would make 1. 7 times 8 is 56. That's going to equal my numerator, so x minus 5. Then to solve for x, I would just add 5 to both sides. Negative 5 plus 5 gives us 0, so that would disappear. 56 plus 5 is 61. Example two, write and solve a multi-step equation. Our real concept here is fundraising. The student council raised two fifths of the money they need to cover the cost of the school dance with a bake sale. They raised an additional $150 selling raffle tickets. 
If the student council has raised $630, what is the cost of a dance? Write an equation for the problem, then solve the equation. So let's complete the table to write the equation for the cost of the dance. So here we're saying C is going to be the cost of the dance. So that's what we want to know, is how much does the dance cost? So to write our equation, it's going to say two-fifths of the cost, so two-fifths C, plus that extra $150 that they already have, gives us the total of 630, so it equals 630. Now, if we want to solve it, we take our equation, and we're going to start undoing all the operations until we figure out what C is equal to. First, I see adding, and then I see a fraction here. This is actually multiplication with a fraction. We learned about multiplying by the inverse in the previous lesson, so we're going to use that method. First, let's get rid of that plus 150 by doing the opposite, so minus 150, and then whatever I do to one side, do to the other. So I'm subtracting 150 from both sides. I'm left with 2 fifths C is equal to 480. Now, to undo my fraction, I'm going to multiply each side by its inverse or its reciprocal. So here, instead of 2 fifths, I would multiply by 5 over 2. Again, doing this allows me to get the same value in the numerator and the denominator, which essentially gives me a value of 1. So multiply both sides by 5 halves, and 5 halves, or 5 over 2 times 480, gives us a total of 1,200. So the dance is going to cost $1,200. And as with before, we should check our answer. So if I plug in 1,200 into my equation, 2 fifths times 1,200, then add 150, do I get 630? Let's find out. When we're multiplying by a fraction, I multiply by the top and divide by the bottom, or vice versa, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top. I'm going to divide first by 5. So 1,200 divided by 5. I know that 120 divided by 5 is 24. And then this was just 10 times as much. So my answer would be 10 times as much. Then I still have to multiply by 2. So I get 480. Add 150. Do I get 630? Yes, I do. So did I get a true statement? Yes, yeah, 630 equals 630. Check your understanding. Read through the situation, write an equation for the situation, and then solve that equation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have picked C. Now, this one's a little tricky to figure out since the two thirds is actually not in the equation. So let's think about what this means and how we can get our equation. So first of all, the store has 38 basketballs. So if we look at our total here, it should say equals 38. It does. That didn't help us, but at least we know we're on the right track with it equals 38. So that's how many they have left. Now, 38 is how many we have left, but the fraction is talking about how many it sold. So if it sold two thirds of the basketballs, so let's say I have a fraction bar here and we will divide it into thirds. The store sold two thirds. So this is sold, this is sold, which means this is the amount that has left. So only one third of the basketballs are left. So one third of them are left. And then our total is actually higher than it was because people returned the basketballs. So they returned eight basketballs, which means we gained eight more in our total from what they actually sold. So our equation should actually be one third of the basketballs are left plus eight more that were returned is equal to 38 total, which ends up being C. And if we were to solve that by subtracting eight from both sides and multiplying by three, then we end up with 90 basketballs. So the stars started with 90 basketballs. If we wanted to check to see if 90 makes sense, if they had 90 total, that means that each is 30. So there should have been 30 sold, another 30 sold, and the 30 left over. Two thirds of them were sold, which brings it down to a 30 total. Add eight back, we have 38 left. So 90 does make sense. C is the correct answer. Example three, solve multi-step equations with letter coefficients. Sometimes you're going to see equations that have coefficients represented by letters. That just means you don't know what the value is of that coefficient or the coefficient value could change. To solve these, we're still going to follow the same process that we've done before to get the variable that we want to know what it's worth by itself. So if we wanted to solve ax plus 7 equals 5 for x, so here notice it tells us what letter to solve for. That's what we need to end up with by itself. So we're solving here for x. A, we're just going to pretend as if we know what the number is but we can't actually calculate anything out. So, and in this, they're telling us assume that a is not equal to zero. If it was equal to zero, then it wouldn't be there. So we have to assume that it's not zero. So I have something x plus seven equals five. Just like before, my first step would be to undo that plus seven by subtracting seven from both sides. When I do that, seven minus seven is zero, and then five minus seven is negative two. Now I'm left with ax equals negative two. Just for a quick reference to show how this works with a letter, let's say that instead of a, it was actually four. We have 4x equals negative 2. Our next step then would be to divide by 4. So here I would be dividing by 4, dividing by 4, and then my final value would just be negative 2 divided by 4. The same thing works if it's a letter. So instead of knowing that this is 4, let's erase all of that, we're dividing by a. So that way it can be any coefficient. So if I divide both sides by a, a divided by a, anything divided by itself is equal to 1. I'm left with x. On this side, 
I can't simplify by dividing a number by a variable, so I just leave it. My final solve equation here just ends up being x equals negative 2 divided by a. If you have more than one variable, this is okay. It's okay to have a simplified equation with more than one variable. And in fact, you're usually going to end up with all the variables you started with in your final answer, assuming they don't cancel each other out by being inverses. Check your understanding. Solve 2 minus ax equals negative 8 for x. Again, assume a is not equal to 0. Pause the video and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said d, x equals 10 divided by a. So let's see how we get this. So 2 minus ax equals negative 8. And I want to solve for x. So I'm going to undo all the stuff around x. First, this is secretly a positive 2 out front here. So I need to subtract 2 from both sides. Remember, it's not the sign after, it's the sign before that we use to determine what the opposite is. So plus 2, I have to subtract 2 from both sides. Negative 8 minus 2 more is negative 10. I'm still left with minus ax, and that equals negative 10. The coefficient that I'm dividing here is a, but not only is it just regular a, it's still minus a. So I need to divide by negative a. Negative a divided by negative a gives me 1, so I'm just left with 1x. And then here, I still have 10 divided by a, but the negative divided by a negative makes it positive. So these end up being positive values. So x is equal to 10 divided by a. Take time to pause and reflect. Did you struggle with anything in this lesson? If so, how did you deal with it? This video has finished, so write down your thoughts before moving on.